guys, welcome back to another video. So today I want to focus on the heart and soul of this industry, drivers. The question I keep getting over and over again is where do I find drivers? And this is the wrong question to ask, but let me explain in just a minute. Ready? Let's go. I get a ton of emails every single day from you guys. And something that I have realized is that a lot of you are coming from a different field, looking to open a trucking company, do the back office and hire some drivers to actually operate the trucks. So naturally the question I get a lot is where do I find drivers? And as I said before, this is the wrong question to ask. Let me give you some statistics. According to the AMVA, states issue more than 450,000 new commercial licenses every single year. Now this is in addition to the 3.5 million CDL drivers in America currently employed. We're not talking about those that are unemployed. How many active jobs are there? Well, the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that there are 231,000 openings for truck drivers every single year. So 450,000 new CDL holders every year versus 231,000 new jobs for those CDL holders every year. See the issue with the question? Where do you find drivers? Well, everywhere. Go to your local CDL school and you'll find 20 new CDL holders just there. I guarantee it. Jeez, you're in a mood. Okay, let me rephrase the question. Where do you find experienced drivers? Ah, now this is a better question, but still not completely correct. See, this is the problem with this industry. So many carriers are concerned about where to find someone to hire that they forget all about the why. Why is everyone screaming about a driver shortage when there are twice as many new drivers as job openings every single year? Well, the answer is actually very simple. There is no driver shortage. There is a driver surplus. However, there is a huge problem with retention. According to the ATA, the annual turnover rate for truck drivers driving for bigger carriers is 90%. And this has been the case for decades now. So the question you guys should be asking me is not where to find drivers. What you should be asking me is how to retain them. And this is a question I will gladly answer. Before I get into it though, I want to briefly mention something. Some of you guys watching this channel are in a different industry and are looking to switch to the trucking industry because of the immense opportunity to make money. And this is wonderful. And I'm so glad that I was able to inspire some of you to make that switch. However, However, I feel obligated to give you a word of caution. Coming from a completely different field with the hope of opening a trucking company, hiring some drivers and kicking it back and collecting some paychecks can be detrimental not only to the drivers you're going to be hiring, but also to you. Wait a minute, you hypocrite, you did the same thing. Yes, my background is in the fashion industry and I was thrown into this industry. I also unfortunately do not have a CDL license, so I do not have firsthand experience of being a driver myself. However, I was blessed to start this business with my family. And the most important thing I've learned is the hardships of being behind the wheel. Although my experience is not firsthand, I know exactly what drivers face on a day-to-day -day basis basis. And this is because the closest people to me had to go through those hardships every single day. So walking nonchalantly into this industry with the hope of hiring a driver and just kicking it back and collecting some checks from the brokers will result in a driverless company. Now, many people believe that money is the solution to the retention issue, but let me give you a little insight. Money is going to absolutely pique someone's interest when applying for your job but it will rarely be the reason someone stays in that position. So on one hand, yes, you have to be very competitive in the salary you're offering. However, on the other hand, remember that money will not be the reason someone stays with you. After all, there are many other carriers who are ready to pay way more than you're paying to get that driver on their team. The solution to this retention issue is actually much simpler. Have empathy and respect for the person you hired. Now, what does this mean? Number one, be transparent. Some carriers try to cheat their drivers out of their hard earned salary. I know that you're saying the trip is a thousand miles, but my system shows that it's 500 miles. So we're going to pay you based on the 500. The way we have solved this issue is paying by odometer readings only. 
The only time you'll see us calculating miles is to see whether this trip can fit within the available hours for hours of service. But payments are by odometer readings only. Number two, get a fuel card. Yikes, the horror stories. Just pay those $600 out of pocket and we'll reimburse you. Someday. Get a fuel card for your driver. Set limits for fuel, washes, scales, maintenance. They shouldn't be paying for operating expenses out of pocket. That is your obligation as the owner of the company. Number three, reimburse on time. Sometimes the driver will be forced to pay for things out of pocket here and there. So make sure you do your part and reimburse them on time. Don't delay, it causes distrust. Number four, paid detention and layover. This is a rule we follow and I urge all of you to follow as well. Detention and layover should be paid regardless of whether you as the carrier are getting paid by the broker. Remember, the driver was the one stuck at loading or unloading, not you. There is money to be made in this industry. Don't get greedy now. Number five, maintain your truck. This has always astounded me. Hey Bob, welcome to the team. Let me show you the piece of snazzy equipment that you're gonna be driving. Please don't be one of those carriers that gives their driver a truck that is falling apart. It's not safe for the driver, for the people around, or for you as a company. Number six, listen to the driver. Having the title of owner of the company does not mean that you now know everything. Listen to your team. If your driver is saying that there is an issue with the truck, don't try to argue, just fix it. Number seven, be available. Communication is everything in this industry and a big part of that is because there are issues that can arise on the road. So be available to your team and make sure you're able to assist them when they need your help. Keep that phone on. Number eight, be human. One of my biggest pet peeves is when the owner, supervisor, manager thinks that they're right here and that the driver is right here. It makes my skin crawl. Be approachable. Have a conversation with your team once in a while. Joke around. Build a trusting relationship. This is so important. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other things that you can do in order to show empathy and respect and care towards your team. Remember, small gestures can go a long way. For example, ensuring that the inside of the truck is in pristine condition or making sure there's a new mattress for those OTR drivers or new bedding. Be considerate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it will bring some positive change, however small, to this industry. I'll see you guys in the next one.